Packers fans, stay up to date on all of your Packers news this season via our newsletter. You can sign up for the PackersNews.com and more Journal Sentinel newsletters by clicking on the link in the brief field of this video. Hello Packers fans, welcome into the Green 19 video podcast here on a Friday before the Packers take on the Tampa Bay Bucks. They're going to travel to Tampa Bay tomorrow for week three games. Uh, Ryan, we've talked a lot about this game in terms of Brady versus Rodgers. This will only be the fifth time these two legendary quarterbacks have faced off. Uh, I mean, they are, they are also on arguably the backside of their career. What are we going to be able to get out of this matchup between these two guys? Gosh, it's amazing you have to say arguably there, right? Because one's 45 and the other's 39. But they have defied father time. No one liked Tom Brady. It's going to be very interesting for both these guys come Sunday because the Bucks, you know their receiver position, right? I mean, Julio Jones is going to be suspended. Chris Godwin hasn't played all season, didn't practice, hasn't practiced so far this week. Julio Jones didn't play last week, not practicing this week. But now the Packers with Al Lazard still nursing the ankle with Sammy Watkins dealing with the hamstring, Christian Watson dealing with the hamstring, and Randall Cosman out of practice because of an illness. You're looking at two guys that you – know, they're awfully thankful for the running backs they have behind them. Leonard Fournette, Aaron Jones. Yeah, and the Packers brought back Travis Fulgham to the practice squad on Thursday, seemingly just to get through practice. Down four receivers might be the first week we see Samari Toure, might see Juwan Winfrey elevated again. Spoon, for as much as we talk about Brady and Rodgers, and understandably so, though, could this game come down to the two defenses? Yeah, I think so. Two defenses, two running games. You know, Leonard Fournette is, is the centerpiece of the Tampa Bay offense. Uh, Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon are the centerpiece of the Packers offense. So, you know, both teams think they have good defenses. Tampa Bay does have a good defense. They are a dominant defense. And Green Bay wants to be that kind of defense. So I think, yeah, I think that's where the game's going to be won. Who, who's more physical and who can get to the quarterback. Ryan, that being said, we've seen the Tampa Bay defense already rack up 10 sacks through two games. Aaron Rodgers has taken seven sacks so as he kind of figures out the chemistry with a, a relatively new receiver group. That could be the case even more so on Sunday if some of these guys don't play. Do, of course, they want to lean on Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon more. Tampa Bay is going to know that. All of that to say, of the guys that have mispracticed this week for the Packers, who is the most important to try to get back? Well, it's Alan Lazard, and I think that he's in good standing. I mean, he played last week. He was practicing, limited, but practicing in pads on Wednesday, missed Thursday. Not just because, you know, one game back, he picked up right where he left off of. He had five touchdowns the last five regular season games with Aaron Rodgers last year, one touchdown in one game this year. That familiarity is important when you've got a quarterback that's dealing with a lot of new pieces. But it's no coincidence that they got the run game going in the game that Alan Lazard was back because he's a different type of number one receiver. He's a guy who is rugged. He's got the body, the frame to be able to block. And he's very willing to stick his helmet in there and, and to hit someone in, in the run game. So in both facets of the offense, having Alan Lazard is critical. Spoon, final thoughts from you here too. I mean, this Tampa Bay defense has Vita Vea, Devin White. I mean, they're just stacked. What's the matchup you're watching the closest on Sunday? Um... Well, I think I think it's really just the Packers' offensive line versus the front seven of the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You know, can they pick up all the stunts? Can they pick up the the blitzing linebackers? Can they get some movement up front? You know, the, Tampa Bay relies a lot on speed, but if you can you can get a you know a shoulder on them and move them out, you can create some pretty big holes. And so I think that's where. It's just going to be a big physical game, and 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 you know also I think on the other side around Tampa Bay's offensive line versus the Packers' defensive front, it's a trenches game. A trenches game. That's to your use that's your cliche. Your daddy's kind of football game right there. Uh -huh. um, with that in mind, David Bakhtiari did practice on Thursday, albeit as a limited participant. Elton Jenkins practiced Wednesday and Thursday again as a limited participant. We will continue to watch that through Friday's practice as well, and the inactives list which will come out 90 minutes before kickoff guys don't give me a score but your your one sentence prediction you look at the bucks injury report you think 
pretty good time to be playing the Buck. It's a good time to be playing the Packers. This is a long process to change their identity that they need to undergo, and they're only in week three. So I think for their sake, it would have been much better to play this game later in the season than week three. Spoon? I predict Tom Brady will throw for a touchdown. At least one. At least one. <laughs> My yes. fantasy team needs it. I, I think you sp- said it earlier, Spoon, and I'm going to steal it because it was a great line, a great prediction. I'm going to believe in this Tampa Bay defense till they give me a reason not to. Yeah, it's it's true. They are so good. Uh, they're, they're good in the back end. They've got, you know, the guys up front. But they're not unstoppable. I mean, right. they're not. It's, so far this year they have been. They've given up, what, 13 yeah. points in two games. But, you know, the, the Packers – are not a slouch. And I, and I think it should be noted that the two quarterbacks they have played so far were um, Dak Prescott, who ended up becoming injured, and For so then they they faced, I don't even remember who, who Dallas brought in, uh, which I think says enough. Yeah, no kidding. And I then they faced Jameis Winston. You know, Cooper Rush, wasn't he? Cooper Rush, that's yes. right. So they faced Dak Prescott for two quarters, then Cooper Rush, then Jameis Winston. It's a lot lot different than Aaron Rodgers. So we will see what happens on Sunday. We will all be there in Tampa to cover it for you all. So stay tuned to PackersNews.com for full coverage leading up to, during, and after the Packers game versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. For the Green 19 podcast, this has been the Green 19 podcast from JS Online and PackersNews.com.